Oh yeah, let's talk about our cats. We start the season introducing ourselves. You know, it's Sarah, Dan, Austin, and Quinn. But now it's the cats. Uh, obviously, Bjork is my cat. She's a, a beautiful beast and a, a complete psychopath who wants to kill all other cats. <laughs> my cat's name is Ragtime. I've had him for f- almost five years now. We got him like right before the pandemic. He 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 he's a perfect boy. He's the best boy in the entire world, and he's got like a weird scuff on his eye from when he was like a baby like before we adopted him but it's fine it doesn't like hurt him he just has special eyes oh uh mine is professor peanuts he's very very sweet he's also very demanding he doesn't care about my emotions (laughs) uh i ran out of wet food one night so i had to only give him dry food and he spent according to pokemon sleep he spent the entire night biting me (laughs) i've I've never woken up to my pokemon sleep being like i don't think you were asleep at all less oh my god uh, and of course, I have my new cat, Miss Tootsie. Uh, she's two years old. We got her from a friend of my girlfriend, Maya, uh, She who recently had a baby, so she could, just didn't have the time or energy to take care of her anymore. She is the sweetest animal I've ever encountered within like five minutes. She was basically like, yeah, I've lived here forever and love you too, uh, unconditionally. Aww. Now, there is a slight problem we have encountered uh, after three weeks of having her. We were oh, under- she's trying to sign you up for like MLMs or something like that. She said like uh, Herbalife. No, that was a different one of Maya's coworkers. Uh, okay. <laughs> she isn't spayed and she is currently sexually harassing me specifically uh, near constantly for the last 72 hours. Uh, and I just saw I got a notice uh, from my girlfriend uh, who said she ushy gushied on the floor? I put a sock over it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> That's the worst way I think I've ever heard anyone say that. So Tootsie is a bard. I think Bjork is a barbarian. Professor Peanuts, this is an interesting one, because he loves to bite and chew. That, that's like fighter-coded behavior, I think. Uh, but he is also uh, quite intelligent and uh, a bitch, so I feel like a wizard <laughs> might also fit. <laughs> Ragtime, I, I believe we, me and my partner Charlie agreed, he agreed he's either a, a rogue or a ranger. I forget which one. Have you considered, Quinn, that maybe uh, Professor Peanuts is just a lizard folk and has a bite attack? Or he's a druid and he just wild shapes into a cat to bite and then wild shapes back into a person cat to watch and judge from afar, as he does. To go teach at the university. That is something I wasn't prepared for compared to rabbits who don't have, like, you know, binocular predator vision. Uh, Tootsie stares directly into your soul at all times. Oh, it, yeah. it is often very loving, uh, but c- currently it's making me deeply uncomfortable. Speaking of druids, at the end of the last episode at the downtime, Stranger, you turned into, like, an th- animal and you ate a ghost. So I don't know what we're doing at this point, but Hialeah definitely wants to start this episode asking you, hey, how come you could bite ghosts? Uh, well, as you know, at level six, druids gain magical attacks. <laughs> I did not know that. I'll write that down. In universe, though, my friend. <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, what, what would the what would the justification stranger give here? Um, back home, the undead aren't a uncommon thing to encounter, so one must find ways to deal with them when in, when face to face or claw to ectoplasm i don't have any ectoplasm questions i i just still feel kind of bad about what happened but like you know we i apologize we're going to move forward from it that child will find that secret gold or whatever someday <laughs> <laughs> might might we take a, a moment to rest so I can need to clean off this this uh, child's grandfather off of myself. <laughs> uh. oh, um, 
behind you, you will see that uh, Parks, the robot, is kind of like uh, nervously uh, standing behind you uh, with his uh, little robot hands kind of mm-hmm. uh, clasped together like he's just patiently waiting for you all to finish. Oh, yeah. Lily, Lillian did. Like, I, I forget how far we got into this questioning, but Lily, Lillian did want to ask Parks, like, why exactly do we need gas masks f- for, for this next vibe check oh very good you're perhaps done with disturbing the remains of the departed and uh, bringing ghosts about we can talk to the matter at hand yeah that sounded condescending i really do like you guys i, I, I have a poor way of speaking no, sometimes no, it was i think my your fault. voice just sounds like that it's understandable Check your personality module when you speak to me. <laughs> Looking around, see if there are any other remains I can knock on the floor. <laughs> give, give me a perception check. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you called my bluff. Uh, what I have a plus four to perception, so that's that's okay. Uh, Twenty-two. <laughs> yeah, this urn. It's right next to you. <laughs> you, you you don't even have to look far. You just like shift slightly to the right, and there's absolutely Aaron right next to you. Okay, Hylia doesn't push it on the floor because she's not a psychopath, but she okay. she jokingly acts as if she's going to just to see what the robot does in response because she's curious. Oh, <laughs> that's the sound the robot makes as he tries to run up to intercept you. Um. But if you aren't knocking it over, he is just going to uh, kind of pathetically uh, stumble in place uh, right in front of you. All right. So it seems like we're filling this place with sort of ectoplasmic landmines. Um, Parks, why don't why don't we link up after the? Why don't we circle back to this? Get something in your team schedule uh, to to go over maybe a better system because it seems like people are just leaving these out here. Well, you know, we do we do try to have a system in place, but of course, uh, things are constantly changing here, you understand. New people, comings and goings, all the time people might show up. We get boats of new visitors every other day, it feels like. How, how long are, are some of these body parts being kept here? Do we do we have a repository? What's What's being done? I'm mimicking your voice a little bit. That's bad. <laughs> no, I think you sound quite dashing and handsome. Don't even I, worry about it, stranger. It happens to me all the time. I feel like you sound quite debonair and sexy right now, so I appreciate it. <laughs> I I would say that we do try to keep the more um, sensitive remains uh, under uh, pristine conditions to ensure that they uh, remain uh, fruitful for when they eventually are hopefully brought food for resurrection uh, but ashes as is returned in many urns uh, those tend to uh, clutter up it uh, apparently is easier to bring a pile of ashes across the world than it is to uh, carry a whole body don't you know <laughs> no. believe me i know that quite quite well why do you know that quite well stranger hold on everyone shut up <laughs> how many bodies have you carried around stranger I, I mean, Stranger points to the, the human rib cage that he grew grew around. Where where do you think these are coming from? I don't know. The rib cage store. Someone dies. We might need a corpse here or there to grow someone. That that is curious. I I had a, a small question for you, uh, Sir Stranger. Uh, well, um, can you can you feel? that body at all or like do you connect with its nerves or is is that just pure weight attached to your body at this point um well it's sort of like i guess a skeleton that you might well you don't have a skeleton you're a you're a warforge that doesn't really fit um L- lillian do you do you have bones <laughs> yeah everyone who has bones raise your hand <laughs> everyone with bones in this conversation raise your hand and no one I, will raise their hand. No one raises their hand. I think Lillian being a dryad has like a, I forget, like, like you know how trees like, like Hylia have like the fucking like water going up and down and like plants have that too. I, I think that some kind of plant thing is going on inside a fair body. So no bones. 
So instead of blood, you'd have like little vines or something or like little, uh, uh, what is it? What's the thing they'd get from the sun? Chlora something? Chlorophyll? Chlorophyll? Yeah, like little chlorophyll tubes or something like that. Lillian like photosynthesizes as like kind of like a substitute for like going into a trance and like like drinks water and stuff. And, and, and like the, the, those are basically what keeps fair going. Yeah, I don't know if we needed to keep talking about this stuff right now, but I do yeah. have questions about all this. I was gonna, yeah. I believe that we should probably get to the matter at hand because I think we spent enough time talking about what was it, bones and knocking stuff over. Yes, I suppose I can answer your questions later. Now, who, where is this this stinkmeister, or what what's happening? What's going on? Where are they? So you're going to be talking to uh, Sir Buck, of course. He is uh, a uh, rather fungal-like person that you can find uh, far outside of the gig, uh, more towards uh, another side of the island. It's a little bit of a trek, but uh, of course, uh, not too far. He uh, doesn't want to miss his opportunity to be next up in line as he comes to visit. Uh, but usually, you can smell when he's coming. Mm. It's a... Uh, a pungent odor, uh, decay and rot. Is that Sir Buck as a title? S-I-R? Uh, well, just Buck. I refer to everybody with honorifics uh, when I can. So uh, B-U-C-K is just the character name if you're working on a Wikipedia entry for this character <laughs> or something like that. Okay, do now, you have I, the... I, I, <laughs> I, I do gotta ask, is, is Buck going to be offended that we show up in gas masks? Um, yes, but I, I would say uh, Buck will be offended no matter how you show up. So oh. uh, keep that in mind. He is um, a private individual, a bit surly, uh, doesn't stay at the gig because he doesn't like other people. Or, or he does like them, but he likes them in a very particular way, which is dying. Well, it seems like he liked at least one person alive, considering he has someone on a list. Yes, it is uh, quite surprising to me as well, but uh, hopefully that is something you can uh, wrangle out of the good boy. <laughs> you know how to, you know what I'm saying. Don't, don't strangle him. Why not? Well, team, <laughs> deep breaths and let us go meet our clientele. If, if if I if I could, I I, I do have uh, some quick messages I also meant to pass along to you earlier. There's been so much hubbub going around. I I, I meant to mention that I I have a message for your team. Wait, do you, do you have a name by the way? Do you do you call yourselves anything? I think we're the vibe checkers. Yeah, I believe Mox said that. <laughs> Okay, I mean, you, you don't have to do anything Mox tells you to do if you don't want to. If you wanted to give yourself a cooler name, like Laser Team 7, I would understand. Worm Squad 9. Uh, you haven't seen uh, Speaker Mox. If you had, you would understand. The man is dr simply dripping. <laughs> His style is undeniable. We wouldn't fuck with that. Well, it's very wet around here. I think most people are dripping. Well, I, I received a message from uh, Miss Killings, who's uh, wanted to speak with you at your uh, immediate convenience, is what she said. Was that Miss Killings? Yes, uh, M-I-S-S-K-I-L-L-I-N-G-S. -S -S That's what I Ms. thought. Killings. So do, we, yes. do you have like a respect module that you have to it's call people Sir Buck and Miss Killings? Is that like a, a politeness protocol? I just try to be uh, polite, you know, Sir Hylia, Sir Hylia, you know, I want to treat everybody with respect. Can you call me Big Papa? <laughs> Big Papa Hylia, absolutely. <laughs> I love it when you call I me Big Papa. I have to make a note. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's throw our hands in the air. We're true players. Let's go. <laughs> Hold on, I'm not done! I'm giving you quests, goddammit! <laughs> Wait, you're, you're trying to fill up our quest log? Yeah, hold on. Uh... Strangers going around clicking on everything to obtain all the quests and then determine what the most <laughs> operative uh, route to complete them is. Uh, Parks will continue and say, Also, uh, Fair Dumas has uh, returned to the land of the living. 
Uh, it was something Speaker Mox used to do, is to usually greet them as uh, new arrivals tend to be a little disoriented, so if you're able to find some time in your very busy schedules, I'm sure the, uh, the young one would appreciate a little uh, uh, greeting. Yeah, that's a social link we should max, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've I, 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 I been meaning to check in. I, I just haven't had the time yet. Yeah, so if if this is a video game, your your quest log has has just popped up with three new quests uh, to go visit Buck and uh, look into your next vibe check. Uh, Miss Killings demands your immediate attention, and then uh, Dumas has recently returned to the living, and uh, you have the opportunity to speak with them uh, should you want to. All right, Hialeah votes for Dumas. Uh, stranger votes for Miss Killings because Buck's going to be mad no matter what. <laughs> I, I think if we're doing a vote, I, I think that like uh, Lillian also votes for Dumas because I don't know who Miss Killings is. Actually, I mean, this is an interesting question. How about uh, Hylia and uh, Lillian both give me history checks because you you have been members of the gig for a while, so... Okay, history. Thirteen. Check. See if you do know anything about her. Eleven. So you know quite a lot of the guests that come through here. You uh, have heard, perhaps maybe of Miss Killings, but you have never seen her before. Uh, it, if this is somebody who stays at the hotel, they are presumably then a pretty private person. Uh, Lillian, you have never seen them at any one of like your shows, for example. Ilya, no one has ever come to like the. Uh, uh, the church that you you sometimes uh, worship at, or anything like that. You have no notes on this person. They have they have not made their presence known to you before. If this person doesn't respect my style, then I have no use for them. Yeah, I yeah. only <laughs> I only want f- fans <laughs> or strangers. Come on, ca- ca- whoa! <laughs> Counterpoint, you got a stranger mi- in the party. Yeah, Counterpoint, Miss Hylia. New person you have no notes on could be an interesting story. Seems to need us desperately for whatever reason. I think you're outvoted two to one, Pumpkin Man. So unless you want to split the party, I'm I'm going. Bye. Yeah, we gotta we, we gotta go check on Dumas. Uh, stranger, stranger will acquiesce, but he uh, he does say I'm not really sure if we need to meet them now. It seems like we have two more pressing matters, but we are a team. Quinn and I were talking about this recently in RPG design where players tend to uh, get attached to like the first things they see. Like people, the, whoever the uh, romanceable character is introduced first is the, always the most romanced and so forth. So I feel like uh, Quinn designed this RPG for us to check on this doppelganger. They're going to get very sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, like, I, yeah. I, I feel like this probably won't take too long. Oh, well, we're going to find out. You guys are going to head over to the uh, big spiral staircase that uh, exists in the gig and kind of starts in above and then the staircase just kind of spirals down further and further into the below part where uh, things get a little uh, fishier, uh, wetter, and a little bit more crude. And uh, nearby, you can see an individual with pale white skin and pale white hair who is kind of sitting nervously and awkwardly to themselves uh, just nearby. Uh, I'm putting a picture to chat in case you haven't seen what a changeling looks like in D&D 5e, but they are essentially humanoid-like uh, individuals who have z- zero sort of pigmentation to their skin or their hair, uh, and maybe like a little bit of shadow around the eyes. Oh, hey, it's my uh, skin tone. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, this character goes out to the sun for a few minutes, and then it all starts exploding and boiling off. <laughs> Hialeah is leading the charge. She just walks up and says in common, Hello, I'm Big Papa Hialeah. <laughs> this is Lillian and Stranger. We saved you from the mind zone. What's up? Oh, well, uh, I, uh, uh, oh, I, I guess I don't need to do the voice anymore. Um, you can if you want. It's fun. <laughs> oh, Oh, I don't make, feels right. I don't want to make anyone mad, though. I'm sorry. Did I offend anybody already? No, 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 oh, no, no. Oh, no. Is this Quinn? <laughs> Quinn, is this you? 
So d- d- we, we wanted, we were coming over here, Dumas, because we wanted to check on how you're adjusting. I know you just came back very recently. Uh, it's kind of, it's kind of weird being back. I don't remember really being dead. Um, and I feel like I was an inconvenience to everybody because you had to bring me back. And I haven't, I haven't talked to Harper because I feel like he's going to be really mad. And uh, kind of hyperventilating a little bit. Do you, do you think I should deal with which, what, what, what should I do first? Stranger looks over the side of the spiral staircase and just idly comments, Oh, it becomes a water slide halfway down. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think you should talk to the guy whose brother you were pretending to be. That feels like first thing. Just smooth that one over one way or the other because it's going to get so awkward with that. Just kind of, it's a big, you know, I haven't personally impersonated anyone's brother for a long time. I feel like (laughs) that is probably uh, something you want to get taken care of right away. Just nip that one in the bud. Best not to delay. You already know him well enough. Shouldn't be too hard for you. Just, I I, I do think I agree on that. And, and you know, the longer you avoid it, the more it becomes like a a farcical sitcom thing where you keep avoiding each other and then it just becomes more awkward. Maybe maybe that'd be charming, though. Like, every time I see him, I hide behind, like, a a potted plant or something and try not to knock it over. No. No, no, no. 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 I can tell you how that ends. And it involves knocking over an urn, and then, I don't know, the curse of the mummy comes and gets you? Oh god, are there mummies here? No, the humidity really messes with them. This is a mummy-free zone, luckily. Wait, so you all brought me back? Uh, I think it was mostly a big snake, I think, is what happens. Hold on, a quick question. I I guess because we we were talking to, like the dead remains of you. Do you not quite remember what happened when we came and, and, and did our little vibe check? No. I, I was in my room and then I smelled smoke and pain uh, and then I'm here. And You smelled pain or was that a separate thought? I, it was a lot of uh, tangential <laughs> reactions going on. I was lit on fire in my room I think so uh, I didn't really have like a great uh, expression I guess but it hurt that, did, is that good I'm sorry I didn't mean to upset you no no it's fine like there's so many ways to describe being in pain you like it, it, just you're the one who died you can describe it however you want live your truth girlfriend Z snap <laughs> <laughs> you just say Z snap huh <laughs> I've only got one hand oh, what the fuck you... is up with your body bro <laughs> <laughs> if you if you brought me back, uh, w- w- uh, why? No, listen. Here we are vibe checkers uh, uh, under the tutelage of uh, what was it? What was it? Speaker Mox. Speaker Mox. Yeah. Under the tutelage of Speaker Mox, and we are here to make sure that everyone w- c- that can be brought back, like it is brought back, because this is where. It happens, and, like, I know that there were some circumstances that complicated things, but, like, you're, like, uh, uh, Harper did really want to get, you, like, you back, and, like, you, you, you know, you, you deserve a second chance. Yeah. Um, okay. I can do that. I can, I can, like, be a hundred times better than the uh little weirdo I was before, right? Because, like, I'm somewhere different now, and, like, people won't be mean to me here, right? You could be a hundred times better or a hundred times weirder. That would also be acceptable, I feel like. Well, um, I kind of feel like a burden, just, like, being here and not contributing anything, but I don't I don't know how to help. I do believe most of us chip in in some way to help around here. I'm sure, like, if you asked around, people would have things you need to do. I, I know 
park runs this place? If I Probably might make a, if I might make a suggestion, Lillian, you're regularly putting on shows in the theater here, yes? Yes, I am. My one fay place. And Duma, you have, let's say, experience acting, if in an unconventional way, to the normal definition. Um, I guess if that's what you call uh, pretending to be people for a while. That is what acting is, yes. <laughs> Shall I connect the dots, or...? D L L Lillian has this expression on their uh, on their face that is just like... Th they legitimately hadn't made this connection until you started putting the dots together, and, and Faye is just like... Oh! Okay! Yeah, like, it, uh, uh, Duma, if you ever wanted to... Uh, join me in my acting endeavors. I've got like a pretty steady thing going on in the lounge area that the gig has set up. It wouldn't be like a burden to you to like have someone who's not confident in acting act alongside you because you seem really talented and good. This feels like this feels like a like a high schooler uh, suddenly like uh, doing a scene with Willem Dafoe. Like this is this is big time. This is a really good actor, right? Didn't didn't you convince someone you were their brother for years? Yeah, but Harper's kind of very um, Careful. gullible. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think he would have believed anybody was his brother if they just looked like him long enough. Okay, well I. He's a good listen, soul. He's very trusting. Listen, listen. I've worked with people of all skill levels and, and, and like all levels of confidence back at home. Like we had like junior productions. We had like trained like year like like famous thespians. We had people who hadn't acted a day in their lives. I can make this work. Famous lesbians, definitely. I was listening. What are we? Are we leaving? <laughs> Also famous lesbians, yes, who were thespians. <laughs> uh, well, if you're okay with that, then then, then yeah, I'd, I'd love to be a part of your show, and I can help you set up props and, and make uh, programs, and uh, I, could, I could be an usher. Um, I don't know. What are other things uh, theater people do? I can make a mask that's happy and one that's really sad. Oh, that, that's, always, that's always appreciated. We love the theater masks here. How are your tragic soliloquies? Uh, mid. <laughs> but but I, I can get better. I, I, I mean, I should. You, you, you all brought me back, so I feel like I should, I should really put uh, my all into to something, uh, finally. You'll have people sobbing in no time. I, I can find a play that could get you started off something good for beginners and something that will get you started on stretching those actin muscles uh, in a professional sense instead of a uh, subterfuge sense. Wow. Are you, are all of you like really great artists like Lillian is? I am, yeah. I mean, I would say Lillian is a great artist kind of the way I am. Oh. Ha have, have, haven't you like published a bunch of books or something? Some would say books, other would say, you know, masterpieces, you know, kind of defining uh, works of the ages, uh, you know, things, things of this nature. Books is a little reductive, you know, tomes, maybe. <laughs> I've been meaning to ask you, Hialeah, does, is it at all uncomfortable for you to work with paper? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Um, <laughs> are you using mostly goat skin or have you just sort of just gotten used to it? Yeah, I think I mostly work in vellum uh, for uh, that's a normal for treants. So uh, it's a animal skin. It's kind of revert. We did we did a reverse on you. It was a uno no you situation. Hmm. I see. Have I have I actually previously established anything about the scrolls? I feel like it's very I funny that they're all skin. I don't believe you have. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, they're all vellum, which is uh, an old timey animal skin. Uh, so that that's funny. That that feels right in Austin's wheelhouse as well. The older the scroll, the better. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Uh, well, it, it sounds like Lillian has invited uh, Dumas to join fair shows. 
uh, and has given her some direction. You've encouraged uh, Dumas to go speak to uh, their brother or the person they pretended to be brothers with. So uh, some some momentum has been placed and we will see how that goes. What would the party like to do next? Uh, we got to go see Mrs. Killings. We, we got to see Miss Killings, especially because we outvoted Stranger. I think it's only fair that we do that next and, and not because I'm kind of worried about meeting someone who seems to be very mad about everyone all the time. Um... Is that something you're okay with, uh, uh, stranger? Are you are you down for this? I, I think it'd be uh, wild if you suddenly were like, actually, I don't want to see Miss Killings now. Well, you, I don't want to get Buck too mad, or else he might just kill us outright. Yeah, sure, let's go see Miss Killings. <laughs> What's the worst he could do? Kill us? <laughs> well, yes, actually, but and also maybe something worse. There, there are fates worse than death. Ominous. All right, you are going to go and find the room of Miss Killings. Ma- or, uh, Parks is able to provide you with that information fairly easily. And you find in the gig uh, room uh, 404. Oh, it's not found. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Stranger will knock. Who is it? Uh, you sent for us, Miss Killings. We are the vibe checkers. Ah, yes. You're late. And you're going to hear a voice uh, come to the door and open it. And I'm going to put an icon here on the map. Uh, I think only Austin will know who this is. This looks familiar. It depends on how much you played Ace Attorney. <laughs> Yeah, this looked familiar. I I know Ace Attorney's art style. Yeah. Uh, What you see is a tiefling woman in about her early 30s. Uh, Her skin has a grape hue to it, and she is wearing a a formal business suit and skirt with uh, thin eyeglasses and a prominent red flame, and she has a clipboard with her and a small animal yapping at her feet. I do apologize for our lateness. We were told at our earliest convenience. I did not realize you had a schedule to keep. Everything is about a schedule. That robot down there is a mess and couldn't keep anything in order if he tried. Also, he's racist. He's not... (laughs) It's not his fault. He was built old-fashioned. He was built an old man. What's the animal? Hialeah wants to know the animal. Uh, if you look down, you see uh, a small, fluffy creature uh, with little tiny paws and little tiny, a little tiny tail. Uh, but its neck uh, keeps going up and up and up until it finally reaches the top. And there's a little tiny dog face there uh, that is uh, panting happily uh, at the uh, sight of new visitors. Uh, stranger's crow caws at it aggressively. Doesn't like it. Doesn't like it at all. <laughs> uh, this is, of course, a palm Iranian. Yes. Yes, animal handling check. <laughs> 18. <laughs> this dog loves you. It's like, ah, bah, bah, and it's running around your legs. Uh, it wants to run through your legs. It's confused that there's no like hole in the middle of you to run in between. Uh, but it is it is bouncing happily over all of your like extended roots and uh, just having a good old time. It like it, it like claw tries to like claw up you a little bit, not like in painful way, but just like pay attention to me. I love you. You're a big tree. I love trees. I love peeing on trees. Can I pee on you? <laughs> not inside. Come on. Uh, Miss Killings will just kind of look at the animal annoyed and be like, apologies, the thing is not trained particularly well. I'll take it. No. (laughs) You can't (laughs) just take someone's dog, Halia. If you're big enough, you can. I think you'd be surprised (laughs) what you could get away with. Do you truly want it? Uh, well, let's just, I mean, we're feeling each other out. I get rolled really high, so we're digging each other's vibe right now. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, well, if you decide you want to keep digging its vibe, then it would be one less stress in my life that you are more than welcome to. You seem fun. I'm very fun. 
And at that point, she is going to uh, kind of like flick her wrist and a quill made of fire will appear. And she is going to start writing things into her clipboard. And she's like, are we through wasting time? Can we get along with what we're here for? I think you'd be surprised by how much time we could waste, but go along. Delightful. I need to be moved to the front of the queue immediately. That's nice. (laughs) I don't believe... Well, I guess this is the question. Who is determining this queue and controlling it? Because as as of thus far, it's just been Park saying you have a guy to go talk to. (laughs) I mean, yeah, that is uh, kind of a a thing that you would probably need to discuss uh, further with either Parks or Mox. So seem to be the two people who have an ear on this. But that is your impression so far is there's a list somewhere, right? I I I I don't want to insult Park, but Mox seems like maybe he would know more about like the list specifically. But also at this, like like Lillian is like, I I hmm, why exactly does it need to be a rush order? Because I have a schedule to keep, and that fool of a previous vibe checker threw it all out of whack, and I need to get it done immediately. I have deadlines to keep. I, we are truly sorry for the inconvenience, Miss Killings. Uh, may I ask what your extenuating circumstances are, and I can see what can be done? Um, give me a persuasion check. Okay, I'm bad at that. <laughs> <laughs> I could, Five. I could, could I? Could I? Could I? Um, help in also asking, like, like what? What makes it so that, like, your scheduling has to involve the person that you are bringing back, like? Like, I, I assume that you're a very, uh, like, p- professional, like, well-organized woman. So, like, is, is this, is this, like, something that involves, like, paperwork because this person was, like, your business partner? Sure, give me a persuasion. Let's see, persuasion. Whoa. Whoa. That's a botch. That's, that's a botch. That's a botch. <laughs> With a plus six, that's a botch at seven. <laughs> uh, so to your questions, Miss Killings will say, is every person on this island absolutely incompetent? I don't need to tell you. I have a deadline to keep. That should be enough. Most people will be happy to wait here a thousand more days. It doesn't matter. I have a deadline. I need to go now. It was through the incompetence of the previous vibe checker that I'm already not on my way. Uh, Stranger just smiles politely and says, we understand your uh, distress. I will see what we can do about the situation. And then just turns and leaves. Yeah, I don't know if we leave the room before we have the rest of this conversation. Yeah, L- L- Lillian will like, uh, like fr- from that botch, like awkwardly bow out of the room, like a very deep bow because they're dramatic. But like, just, just, l- just like, okay, I'm sorry for wasting your time. Goodbye. <laughs> Uh, last thing you'll hear is Miss Killings just going huff and slamming the door uh, and the Pomeranian is still outside and it's running around barking and you just hear the door slightly open enough for the Pomeranian to go back inside and then she slams it again. I imagine that was probably the pet of whoever she's trying to bring back. Um, I think we need to get a better handle on how this queue is currently running. As of thus far, we've just been given them by Parks. And I've had at least one person tell me they have a deal with someone to bypass the line or bypass any requirements. Yeah, the goth fish. Oh, so you know of the goth fish. (laughs) I've seen the goth fish around. And I could not get a single piece of information out of her on who she made this deal with. It appears we may have some sort of boss here determining things. Who they are, I have no idea. No one has told me. I might be a little stupid, but I assumed it was Mox. Mox quit the job. Hmm. Yeah, I will say as someone who's just getting into the religion right now, uh, (laughs) Hylia is like, well, uh, we represent the tree and the above interest, so we're in charge up here. And if we want to take it any higher, we'd have to appeal to the church underwater. So uh, I can't breathe water, and neither can either of you, to my knowledge. (laughs) Actually, I can. Okay, well, don't you turn into a fish and go check, bitch. Well, I I can't speak when I'm a fish. 
Well, then, okay, then we were back to square one. <laughs> Unless you want me to still... Oh, you can't ride underwater. That's going to be difficult. All right, there's a lot of problems here. <laughs> Just, just there, just we cannot go underwater and break the the way that this like metaphysical season has been set up. P- point of matter, she is right. This cue, I believe someone said it was upwards of years at points. That this is not efficient. People should be weeded out quicker if they do not match some sort of criteria. It seems like it's at a haphazard first come, first serve. That's going to absolutely benefit someone who can wait out the the long years, potentially. The shorter-lived races might not be able to make that choice. Or those who cannot afford to be up here that long. Yeah, I mean, it is kind of first come, first serve. That's how it's egalitarian. But uh, also, there's a limit to how fast uh, people can find the place with the big snake it's not like it's a it's just a button you push you have to go on a whole quest so it can't go any faster the the quest itself yes you cannot optimize but the waiting in queue can absolutely be we you can gather preliminary information yeah i will say as uh you know my cleric level and my kind of character arc at this point i feel like hylia is dead sent to get uh dead set against anyone jumping the queue I, I think that's still an option for the other characters who want to but like just where i'm at personally it's just like no that what we're here to do is do the big tree uh of you know uh mind palace and uh all the other stuff is like you know, it's it, it it's corrupt. It's immoral. It's like against what we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, and where strangers coming from is not that we shouldn't be doing five checks. It's that there are probably people that are waiting in this line that shouldn't be. Either shouldn't be there in the first place. That can be determined ahead of time, uh, or maybe potentially don't even fit the right. Like if someone did die of old age and they're trying to bring them back, do the people in the line know that? To How be, long are they sitting? To be clear, uh, this is just something I want to establish because this might be a rule that people listening may not know about uh, Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, but the strongest resurrection spell in all of Dungeons & Dragons, True Resurrection, uh, does not work if you die of old age. Um, so whether or not the okay. the well functions exactly that way is something that we will perhaps discover. But the idea of somebody dying from old age being brought back is less of a factor. Yeah, I think off screen everyone knows the rules, uh, or you know, in the universe, so no, no one's wasting our time with that shit. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, that he still believes that there are probably people that can be weeded out for like, yes, absolutely. It, like, if this person, hey, is a known murderer, do you necessarily want them to be? Do, do you need to vibe check this person? Like, the the vibe check in theory is the final step to confirm yes, you should bring this person back. Not um not the only thing being done. That's his standpoint. Just I I think from Lillian's perspective, since Faye did all of the coming over here and waiting, I'm not actually sure exactly how long Faye waited. Probably a while to to bring needles back. I think the wait is getting worse and worse and worse exponentially. I think if you came here before, it was shorter. But just the, the way that it's going to happen is it's going to forever grow, is my assumption, just because more people will find out about it as word spreads across the, you know, uh, the realms or whatever. Yeah, Faye would definitely think that it's not fair if someone has to wait here for, like, upwards of, like, decades. And and, and I, I think that Faye... Got a little confused, but ultimately maybe like agrees with like the ideas that Stranger is heading toward. Also, I think an important thing is that like people come here and they can work at the gig to help chip in or they can just like bring a bunch of money, I guess, which is my assumption with this person because they're just shut up in their room and I've never seen them. Uh, you know, the whole time we've been here. So, like, uh, that's also a, a, an inequality that we could talk about because, like, some people don't have to, for example, work in the theater like we just talked about with Duma. Um, but, you know, theoretically, it's, it should be open to anyone. It's not just a rich person's thing. Mm. But it also is going to favor someone who can afford, even not afford to, like, just monetarily, like, just be here for that long. Like, has nothing that 
would keep them away from here. Since you presumably can't just like drop off the body part. And um, well, I guess that maybe that's something that can be discussed. Can you just leave a body part here to be revived? Since in theory, the vibe check is the, the final choice. Do you fully need a person here past like an initial interview? All very interesting questions. Uh, I think uh, you, if you want guidance, the only person who can really give you anything would be again uh, former speaker or speaker Mox, formerly the vibe checker, who probably had his own sort of order in which things were done, and then Parks, who does seem to be sort of the the point of contact for like getting body parts and managing the gig and sort of running things. Mm. Yeah, I think that can probably be discussed after, I guess, the, the meat of this arc. So let's go find the stinky, uh, I think that you said fungal. So I'm assuming a mushroom person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, you guys are going to go off and look for Buck. Uh, you are given directions. Uh, normally in Dice Funk, this is the opportunity where I would say, like, what do you guys say as you're traveling? But you guys just had... Uh, a very intense conversation, so I can only imagine you guys probably continue uh, debating the merits of the the system and who should be brought back and when. Uh, when you stumble upon a large, um, I guess structure is the best word I can use for it, uh, though it bears no resemblance to any architecture you've ever really uh, seen before. As as far as like a home would be, uh, it is uh, misshapen, deflated at points. Uh, sharp and tall and others and it is made entirely of giant mushrooms that are just growing kind of out of each other and out of the ground that it's built upon interesting is there a door we should knock on there's a big hole in the front <laughs> uh well forwards we go and stranger's going to walk up and call out hello is there a buck here I believe you're Appointment has come to pass. Uh, I'm thinking nature check just to see if any of this is dangerous before I just walk into a cloud of spores. Yeah, absolutely. Give me a nature check. 21. A hundred percent this is dangerous. That is why you were given <laughs> gas masks ahead of time, and it is good to keep aware of yourself as you're in this situation. Uh, yeah. guess I guess I should say I put the gas mask on. I wasn't thinking about saying it out loud. Okay, so the comical scene of a tree, a pumpkin, <laughs> and a plant person putting gas masks on their bodies, roughly mouth adjacent. I put I put my gas mask on top of my masquerade mask with the bunny ears. <laughs> uh, with twenty one, is are there any additional dangers on top of the spores? I guess because like if I'm just breathing normally, walking normally, is that fine, or do I have to be careful like where I step or touch? Uh, you uh would feel better not touching anything you don't know if like, any of these things will explode you see spores kind of floating around in the air and those to you don't immediately come across as dangerous uh but you also do not think you would want to spend a tremendous amount of time here uh just in case they do start to uh, you know leave an infection or rot you in some way stranger makes his crow wait outside of the spore circle <laughs> And then you're heading inside? Yep. All right. Let's head on in. Inside, you see a uh, a squat little fellow. I'm going to add uh, an icon here to the map. I'm going to make him real big because he's my favorite. Oh. Uh, it is a myconoid <laughs> made entirely of mushrooms. Uh, squat, a little bit uh, round. And uh, there are small spores floating around this individual uh, that uh, are naturally kind of passing by all of you. This individual has uh, no uh, specific face, uh, but you notice as these spores kind of get close to you that uh, you feel almost like a, a spell of some sort has been cast on you. And you hear a voice that says, Hey, everybody, it's me. Buck, your bud, your friend, manager here at the Fungal House. How's it going? Did, to, to clarify, <laughs> did he act, actually cast a spell on us? Should, should we roll Arcana, or is this? Just, are we just high? Is that? Is that <laughs> 
That is a great question. Um, I will say you don't need to roll. There was a great nature check right before this. This is a, something that's been established in previous seasons of Dice Funk is how uh, mycanoids will communicate uh, is they will kind of spread spores that allow you to hear their voice as though they are talking to you. Got it. Um, well, hello there. We're happy to be here in your fungal hut. Um, are you Buck? I presume so. The one and only. Uh, we are here to collect the body parts that you've requested to be brought back. Uh, do you have time for some preliminary questions? Well, sure. I mean, well, hold on. Let me get that body for you. Don't want to forget it. And you see the, uh, mycanoid kind of shuffle over to a corner of the room and just grab, uh, kind of, a, a gross mass of, uh, canvas and flesh and kind of be like, so which one of you lucky guys wants to hold this little number? My arms are actually broken, so I can't, unfortunately. <laughs> the stranger will hold out his hands for you. He doesn't care. He's gross already. There you go. And he's going to drop it. And uh, it does land in your hand with kind of a, a wet sploosh. Did, did you say canvas and uh, flesh? Uh-huh. Is he... Is he painting on this? What do, what do you can, can, can elaborate? <laughs> uh, sorry, um, not canvas. I, I mixed up my material. Uh, burlap. I'm sorry. That doesn't answer <laughs> any more questions. Is the flesh in the burlap or are they one and the same? Is it a, is it a dark tapestry? It, it does seem to be uh, both. Uh, there is burlap and there is uh, just chunks of uh, flesh of some kind. Certainly, yeah. Okay, so is this a sack of meat? Because I thought he skinned someone and t- and stitched it into a, a canvas to paint on. Oh, <laughs> stranger's gonna look at this and see if he can identify what he's looking at. Sure, give me uh, a religion check. Oh God, everything I'm bad at. Ten. I uh, you do not really know what this the guy is. Yeah, uh, you're like this is strange as remains. Curious. Um, you said burlap and skin, uh-huh. or and meat. Is this a scarecrow person? What am I looking <laughs> at? <laughs> um, can you tell me about who this is? And he kind of like. I guess, like, waves his hand holding it a bit. I guess the meat sort of sloshing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, careful. That's my buddy right there. That is the remains of the dearly departed Pofo. My good bud. Loved him. So much fun. He was one of the few people to really appreciate death the same way that I do. Pofo. Um, P-O-F-F-O. In case you want it spelled. Got it. Thank I've, you. I've got that in my notes now. Um, what were they by any... Uh, what were they? Oh, it was a Bodak. Have you ever heard of a Bodak before? Dan has. <laughs> uh, Sarah hasn't. You haven't... <laughs> You haven't seen one of these, but I'm going to post a picture here in the uh, uh, Roll20, so perhaps it'll make a better sense about uh, why it's sort of uh, burlap and flesh. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. He's kind of a a handsome gentleman with a mouth the length of his forearm. He looks like he'd be great at deep throating. Jesus. (laughs) Now I I see why you want them back. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I need him back for that. Uh, this is a good opportunity for Hialeah and Lillian, if you would both like to add religion checks once the name Bodak has been uh, dropped to see if you know anything about yeah, these uh, let individuals. let me see. That's a 15. I got a 9. The 15 is very good. So Hialeah, you've perhaps heard of these creatures. Uh, they are individuals that are born... Uh, when people who uh, worship death are killed, a uh, long point in time, they used to particularly worship one uh, person of death, Orcus, who was a, like a demon lord of undeath. Uh, but now it seems that they can uh, spawn whenever people with a, a, pl- a particularly close uh, affiliation with death uh, are, are killed. Well, this is paradoxical because at, at, 
their best, Bojack, are already undead. So we're like bringing back something that wasn't alive to life. That's a that's a noodle scratcher. Um, I I think actually, uh, stranger would turn to Pylee and ask, "Do you know if there's precedent for this on the island?" For bringing back something that was undead, um, I can roll for history. Sure. Yeah, I'm I'm curious too if I could also do that. Yeah, absolutely. Eighteen. <laughs> Another. <laughs> F- fucking crit fail. You're, you're not. You have to be saying I'm going to use the lucky rabbit so you can get credit for these. <laughs> I know you, you. You gotta take advantage of that while you still can. So uh, we have a, a an 18, which is great, and we also have a botch. So I will say that uh, Hylia has been here a little bit longer. You do not recall a specific example of something that is undead having been brought back but you don't have anything that explicitly says it's not possible. The rules of the uh, vibe check and then the well are both kind of a bit of a mystery now, but you have not heard of somebody trying to bring something back and it failing. Uh, Whereas Lillian, you would just believe logistically, it does not make sense that that could happen. Like how does something that's already undead come back? It wouldn't, this would be like throwing trash into the underwater wells. Yeah, I mean this is this is a really interesting premise for an arc, Quinn. I gotta give you props for this. I didn't see it coming. Uh-huh. Uh Stranger is looking at the both of you very intently as you're going over what you believe what'll will happen here. L- Lillian's just like, I mean, if we put it in the tr- in the tree, are are we gonna get like d- d- like white noise? Like what 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 was happening here? Like I I I, I thought I I wouldn't think that it would work like that i hadn't considered it before i'm excited to find out what what mysteries the tree can unlock for us what what uh, beautiful uh you know paradoxes we can explore together so i'm i'm uh, really thankful mr buck for this disgusting <laughs> flesh creation thing uh you're welcome you said you love death what's that what's about that just like theoretically artistically just like you know, big cannibal corpse fan. I I do love them. I love I love a good love good cannibal corpse. Uh, but really, uh, what it comes down to is uh, rot is uh, kind of my vibe. You know, it's just kind of how I get down there. I really enjoy it. It feels so good. Uh, and I kind of model my whole life around it. And uh, Pope Fo didn't maybe feel the same way about rot. Uh, but he did appreciate death uh, very, very intensely, might I add. And uh, I miss him. He's my good buddy. Very few people that I have met as chill as the good Bofo. Well, I can appreciate rot quite well. It's part of a very important step in natural cycles. Uh, tell, tell us about this Pofo. Uh, how, if I may ask, how did he pass? Stranger, do you appreciate... Pofo D's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna burn this island down. <laughs> <laughs> There's not gonna be enough left of you to come back. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, remind me of the question. I paused. I played for a um, second. <laughs> d- w- w- good question. I don't remember. Uh, str- stranger <laughs> asked how, how, did po- po- how, how did Pofo die? <laughs> So, you know how most beings that are kind of emblematic of death die? Uh, weird religious people actually killed him. They uh, saw him as an abomination uh, and uh, murdered him with a radiant magic. Yeah, I can see that happening. I've heard of many such cases. Um, I'm really excited to to watch this whole thing go down because presumably uh, they had some sort of point. <laughs> so we, we gotta we gotta hear both sides. But <laughs> D- does Hylia, uh say that out loud? Uh, <laughs> I think that was kind of an aside. We're just talking about soliloquies today. Okay. Um... Let me. Uh, there's something else I was going to ask uh, about this. Um, do you do you have a plan for what you will do if uh, they are revived? Do you will you do you intend to stay here? Do you have a way to help provide for Pofo as they get back on their feet? 
Well, so if it's my pofo, he doesn't really need much to get back on his feet. Really just love to be around some things that are dying, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, and beyond that, I mean, I have a little bit of a pad here now, so that's pretty nice. But, I mean, we could go somewhere else. I, I could be convinced there's a lot in this wide world that I would be curious to see what it looks like when it's decaying. Quinn, are, would you be prepared? Would the season continue if I just attacked? If I just played with my sword, this person just uh, just a thought experiment. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so before I do anything next, could I just get like a little refresher on how my little mask works? Because I think I might have a misunderstanding of when I can use like the automatic crit thing that it has like attached to it. So before a skill check, a saving throw, or an attack roll is made. You can choose automatically at the forefront to fail it. And if you do that three times, then at some point you can choose to crit on an attack roll or a skill check of some kind. Okay, so I have to like fail those three rolls first before I can get my crit. Yes, and you must you must intentionally say it uh, so it's it's not to be gamed by you rolling badly and being like, oh, that was one of them actually. You have to kind of announce it ahead of time. Right. Because I was thinking about, like, the impression that Lillian got from Park was that, like, Buck is kind of, like, a, a very unpleasant person. And the the way that Buck is talking right now, like, kind of, like, gives Lillian, like, a, a like like a dissonance. Because it's like, well, this just seems like a jolly fellow who's just kind of into, like, uh, like you know, like, the process of things like decaying, and that's kind of strange. And, and, and Lillian is like, I, like, I want to do, like, an insight check on sure. if there's anything up with this guy, but I do want to intentionally, like... Fail. R- r- register that first failure. <laughs> sure. So I also want to roll insight, but not intentionally fail, because, and the stranger will also flat out ask this if need be. Because <laughs> um, he wants clarity of, does Buck and Pofo enjoy being around decay and death? Or t- is Pofo going to actively cause death to people? Because that is a very big difference. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so great question. Let's start first with this insight check, which uh, Lillian is going to intentionally fail. Stranger is going to try to make. Uh, Hi, Aaliyah, do you want to take part in this? Or are you just like, I don't really need to know more about the mushroom. Man, I've seen enough. I do have my stone rune, so I always get advantage on insight checks. That's one of my things. So I, I assume okay. I'll, I should roll it because she's always just thinking about people and what they're mm-hmm. up to. Sure. Uh, 23. Okay. 19. <laughs> great, great rolls. 19, 23, and then Lillian intentionally fails. So I'm going to start with what Lillian gets from all of this, which you're trying to get a read for this guy. And to you, you are like, hey, yeah, this doesn't really add up. Parks, that racist robot just is is profiling people probably just saw this guy be kind of weird about like rot and stuff like that and decided like all right fine you know like maybe he's just a weird little freak no one should be around that's like the impression you're getting is that parks is just incorrect about this guy he seems so jolly like i don't understand why nobody would want to be around him like besides the smell and potential poison gas Um, he can't help that he's he's micing it absolutely uh, whereas Hialeah and, uh, Stranger both, uh, succeeded really, really well. 19 and 23 are incredible scores. So you were able to glean, it's, it's tough to read, like, body language from this creature that has, like, no face for you to, like, read emotions from and is communicating with you entirely in, like, a mental level. Uh, but you do get the sense that, like, this house is intentionally poisonous like you're wearing gas masks you're here kind of warned not to spend too much time here you also don't get the i like the sense that this guy would care if you dropped dead right now and just became more rot for his house uh this is not like a kind individual if that makes sense this does seem like somebody who is very specifically focused on rot and their rot alone so so I guess the one question I'd ask if we can get an answer to this from from these roles, do we know if he doesn't care if someone is affected by this or if he actively wants to cause it to people? 
because that's going to... I, I, I will say he has not done anything to intentionally poison you. He has not, like, sprayed poison mist into you or anything like okay. that. But if you were to stay here and your body got, you know, moist or a thing started to, like, grow on you or something like that, if you started mm-hmm. to rot and decay, he would be perfectly okay with it. He's not going to, you know, try to save you necessarily or anything. He's just like, yep, ashes to ashes. <laughs> Okay, that's perfectly fair. That's all I needed. Thank you. <laughs> this is a big difference from last season because uh, Wendy McDonald will be like, uh, fuck this guy and fly through his brainstem <laughs> immediately. Uh, but I think Hialeah is like, I want to see what the tree has to say. I'm all about the tree. I think my next great tome, uh, my saga for the ages is going to be like the, you know, the the song of the Banyan. And she wants to hear what the tree has to say, honestly. And I think, I don't know if she would admit this to herself, if a couple people have to get spored to death for that story, eh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good <laughs> me, me, Meanwhile, Lillian is just like, you know, maybe people are misjudging this guy. And so maybe th- th- there is something worth like trying to f- figure out if the tree will even register Pofo as a thing that can be revived. And, you know, if he, if he's a, if he's a good guy, maybe he deserves another chance. He does have he does have someone who cares about him a lot. <laughs> Str- Stranger will say, um, well, thank you for your time, Buck, I will say. Uh, while this is not necessarily my purview, I can appreciate that we all do die and rot, and from that rot, new life comes. And he gestures to uh, all the, like, the growing mushrooms. Uh-huh. And then, of course, that too passes in time. Not in my lifetime, I hope. I want this to just keep on growing. But, you know, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for bringing back my friend. Uh, And if you should get stabbed and it seems lethal, why don't you come back here? And uh, I can make you into a pretty good retaining wall for my dining room. (laughs) I think I would clash with the decor, but I'll come back and we'll try to workshop it. Thank you very much for your hospitality. All right. Goodbye now. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. It's been lovely. Why does he need a dining room? He doesn't have a mouth. <laughs> He's a detritivore. They this absorbs it. You don't have to get fungus pilled, Dan. <laughs> when did he? I guess he just step on it. Yeah. That. Okay, that's fair. Or is that? Do you not have a stepping room in your house? I don't have feet. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a skill issue. <laughs> Every couple of hours, you say something wild about your body. <laughs> Well, you don't really have you have feet. We have feet analogs, not like real feet. All right. So the party right now, you you, you checked off a little bit of everything on your list. Uh, you have the body part. The question is right now, uh, what do you want to do? You at this point, nothing is stopping you from just going in and starting a vibe check and seeing what happens. Um, but the the theme of this episode has been a large discussion about how things uh, should be run. And also, you were asked to allow someone to cut in line. So I want to, you know, pose all of these these pieces of information before I ask the party, what do you do next? What if we did both at the same time? Elaborate. What if we put both body parts in the banyan tree at the same time? Yeah, I think the the conundrum of whether to let someone cut in line is interesting. I just think Hialeah is not is, is not about it. She just d- doesn't want that to happen. So I'm, I'm sorry that my character is interested in this place here uh, quest. I, like I think that Lillian like sh- like Faye doesn't think it would be fair to let someone cut in line. I also think like Faye is kind of stuck on thinking about like what what did miss killings mean by like mox like fucking things up for her but like this is one of those things that like like lillian personally thinks could probably be talked about after the vibe check because it doesn't sound like a pressing matter like it does sound like a pressing matter for miss killings but like like there's also like vibe checks in the queue that are up at the front that need to be done, you know? 
Yeah, I think a, a responsible adventurer would ask Mox about this situation and then ask what Miss Killings is willing to give us in exchange for cutting the line and then we could weigh the quest rewards. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I feel this this ends with uh, uh, Hylia drowning Miss Killings in the ocean <laughs> if we go that way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, how does Stranger feel about this? Um, Stranger does want to ask Ma, like, if he's around, hey, what did she mean by this? But he still just wants to do, um, uh, the Bodak because he has questions about what would exactly would happen here. And he also needs to see how certain other things would play out. Sure. So again, like your quest log, it's updated. There's a whole bunch of changes. You have this, this side quest in there, like agree to take miss killings uh corpse piece and cut in line and you guys are pushing that aside you're gonna go ahead just with the list as is and then you have a, like a little note like side quest for later talk to mox about the way things are and also ask what miss killings meant about him and those those are your things right now but you're gonna focus on doing the vibe check first yeah, in theory, like, we could just talk to Mox after this vibe. Like, I don't really know how much time passes in the vibe check. I don't imagine it's, like, weeks or whatever, uh, or, like, more than a day. We can just ask Mox, and if this person did not pass the vibe check, if it was egregious enough whatever Mox did, we could sneak killings up to next in line. I like to think there's a montage of us going through our work day where we vibe check like, you know, six people in a day and it's just the people who fell over and like, you know, broke their neck in an unfortunate stairs accident. Uh, someone who ate too big of a turkey leg and choked on it. Just a bunch of boring <laughs> ones. So like we, we can't, like, you know, we can get a lot of work done. It's just the season focuses on the real wild ones. <laughs> yeah, I, I would be kind of remiss as a DM if I made you go through one. I was like, so this guy's name's Carl. Carl yeah. got a sprained ankle and fell down the stairs. Yeah. He got a big splinter. <laughs> got infected. He's, pretty, he's a pretty good guy, though. I mean, his taste in, in, in movies kind of sucks. But otherwise, he's a pretty cool dude. And that's the kind of ones that should not uh, should be able to not have to get vibe checked. If it's just like, yeah, this guy was just like, I don't know, a dad of three who, who got hit by a bus. <laughs> to be clear, the reason for the vibe check is because uh, the only knowledge you have to what this person was before you revive them is the vibe check. Somebody can come up and be like, this is my best friend. They were they donated so much to charity, and then you bring them back, and, you know, they, they've they killed 17 people by the time they get to the surface. People could just lie. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Also, a potential risk here with the Bodek we're bringing, we're, we're maybe bringing back. Yeah, I, I thought you guys would wait a second to see if <laughs> Bucks was going to answer your question. Like, is this guy just going to come back? But uh, everyone was like, all right, we got everything we came for. Let's go. Oh, I thought I thought we were getting uh, he wasn't going to answer anymore based off of how it was going. Whatever. We can move on and we can figure it out from the vibe check. <laughs> uh, all right. So you guys are going to head up to the Banyan tree. You've done this once before. You know what this this situation is like. Uh, you, you approach the tree, there's, uh, an opening that you could start heading into, and, uh, hi, Leah, can I get a religion check from you? Absolutely. That's gonna be a 15. You feel very welcome as you approach the tree, uh, and you feel, uh, almost like a little voice in your head is, like, telling you it's okay, come on in. All right, yeah, I'm coming in it regardless. Let me get let me get up in those branches. We get to get get rooted on. Yeah, get get up all in my banyanusi, as uh, the kids oh say. <laughs> I put, we put a root down. Um, w will the banyan tree call me Big Papa? I feel like the banyan tree is Big Papa in this scenario. <laughs> okay. Biggest Papa. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Biggest Papa. All right. The team enters the banyan tree, places the remains onto the pedestal, and once again, you feel the gentle strangulation of the banyan tree as its roots envelop you. Darkness begins to surround you as the world as you know it begins to fade away. Only to you, though. To the rest of the island, your words and actions begin to root consequences. Buck, the amenable Mike Noid, awaits the return of his best friend. Dumas and Harper reunite and reconcile with a big friendly hug. 
and one resident peers inside of the banyan tree with desperation in their eyes. <laughs> 